Hi everyone and welcome to Creative Chelsea. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up or commenting below. If you want to see more of my videos, press the subscribe button and click on the bell for notifications. If you need any Stampin' Up! products to make this card, you can visit my online store and the link is in the description box below. When you purchase Stampin' Up! products through me, you can earn free products. Check out my current customer appreciation products on my blog and the link is listed below as well. Today I'd like to share with you another one of my April 2021 Artisan Design Team Showcase Projects. And this is card number two out of three. So if you'd like to see my past projects, you can visit the playlist up in the top right corner. Today's card is a really fun interactive card. And so with this little pull tab, you get this little Joey that is jumping in and out of his mother's pouch. And we're going to be focusing on using the Kangaroo and Company stamp set along with the Kangaroo dies and learning this fun pull tab technique. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the first steps we need to do to create this card is create this fun blended background using Pool Party and then Pear Pizzazz ink. And I'm going to be doing them with the new blending brushes from Stampin' Up. Now I do have a one blending brush for each color. And so you can see here that this blue is darker than my pool party, but I'm not too worried about it as after I use it, that color doesn't really rub off. So I'm gonna start by adding some pool party in a circular motion to my blending brush. And then I start off my paper and then blend it into my cardstock, just like this. And I just work that color back and forth until I get a nice dark color that I'm looking for. And you can always go back in to your ink pad and pick up more color. Just remember to start off and then blend back in. Now I wanna go about halfway into my cardstock so that I get a nice blended color between those two colors, the Pool Party and the Pear Pizzazz. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the pear pizzazz side, but I don't want to get any fingerprints onto my pool party. So I'm going to use a scratch piece of paper to place underneath my fingers. Now I've got my green blending brush. I'm going to pick up the pear pizzazz ink with that and then blend it right onto the cardstock, just like I did with pool party. Now I do want to bring it down in or up into that pool party color. So I get a nice blend between those two colors. Once I have blended the background and I have it as I want it, I'm going to add a little bit of grass down here at the bottom. And this stamp does come from the Kangaroo and Company stamp set. And it's just down here at the bottom, this cute little grass image. And we're gonna stamp it in Pear Pizzazz and just kind of randomly all over that bottom of our cardstock. And this cardstock is three inches by four inches. And I am going to kind of focus on the bottom here and then just kind of do a couple above it. So you're going to get something that looks like that. So the next thing we're going to do is stamp and color the images we're going to use on the front. And I started with my flower bouquets and I have stamped them in memento black ink. So the Stampin' Up! colors that I used to color in these flowers are the Old Olive, Melon Mambo, Petal Pink, and Calypso Coral. And just use the darks and the lights of both of those to give it some different colors. So the large kangaroo is stamped in the early espresso and then colored with the bronze and ivory Stampin' Up! blend markers. And then the small one is stamped in early espresso as well and then colored in with the light crumb cake and the ivory blend. And we're gonna go ahead and do that small one um, with one another so that you can see how to create this stop at the bottom. And that's important in the, creating that pull tab so that your Joey doesn't jump all the way out of the pouch. 
To begin, I have my half kangaroo and I'm gonna ink it up in early espresso. And then I'm gonna, I've got a piece of cardstock here that is one and a half inch square. And I'm going to stamp it right in the center. And that's gonna give me about a half inch or a fourth of an inch between those two at the bottom of this Joey. And I'm gonna use that to create my stop for my pull tab. So next we're going to color it. And like I said, we start with the light crumb cake and then we use the ivory for the inside. So I've got the ivory here and I'm gonna start with that. One important thing is when you're coloring with the uh, water-based inks, you wanna try to keep as far away from that ink line as possible or you're gonna get some bleeding. So this is the light crumb cake and I'm just gonna go in and just use my fine tip so I don't get a lot of ink color in there to ruin my ink. So we get a little guy that looks like this. And you can see here on this one, I did get some bleeding happening around the arm. And so by just keeping the ink to a minimum as I'm coloring it, we're going to prevent that from happening. So now I'm going to take the coordinating die that matches this image, and I'm gonna line it up. And if you've ever done a partial die cut, then you'll kind of get an idea of how this is created. So what we wanna do is just cut around the kangaroo, but not at the bottom. So I've added some washi tape to hold everything in place. And then I'm gonna take my stamp and cut and emboss machine plates. And I'm gonna add my kangaroo to my bottom plate. And then the top plate, I'm going to actually place over the kangaroo, but only the areas that I want to cut. So I'm just gonna stop right at the bottom and it's going to prevent that edge from cutting. And so I'm going to be able to, to then have it attached to that stopper. So I'm gonna run this through my machine and be right back. All right, so then when you remove that die, you will have a little guy that can be popped up but is still attached at the bottom. So you're going to take a pair of scissors and right where that die meets the cardstock, you're going to cut a nice straight line to remove the top, but keep the bottom. And then we'll do the same to the other side here. Okay, just like that. Our next step is to create the hole where we will connect the pull tab to the Joey and then create our guide. So this is just my little guide to kind of show me where those things go. So what I like to do is take the kangaroo and place it where I want the finished to be. So you can see that this is kind of where I would like her to stand on my cardstock. Then I'm gonna take the envelope die. You can see here that it cuts out that cute little envelope. So it's a rectangle die and it's perfect for this technique. So I'm going to just place it right where it's going to be covered by the kangaroo. So you can see here that the kangaroo is gonna cover, cover it, but I still have, it's still going to be in that opening. So my little Joey is gonna be able to go in and out of this hole. So I'm gonna take a little bit of washi tape and I'm going to attach it, attach this rectangle to my cardstock and I'm gonna remove the kangaroo. So this is where I want to cut the hole for my technique. So I'm gonna run this through my machine and be right back. So whenever you're removing dies with washi tape, just be really careful to not rip your cardstock. 
So before I add my Joey to the inside of the pouch, I need to make this just a little bit wider. So whenever you, when you use the coordinating die to cut out this kangaroo, um, it creates this slit. And I just need to, on this one side, make that slit a little bigger and a little bit more on this side as well. Just go right up to the arm. And that's just gonna give us a little more movement in the kangaroo because he's a little wider here at the top. So now I'm gonna take these flaps and just fold them in. And then I can slide it into the pouch. And then when those flaps open, you'll see that the, they create that stopper here, okay? Now it looks like it's a little bit, it's gonna show a little bit more than I originally wanted. So I'm just gonna go in there with my um, crumb cake marker and add a little more color so that I don't get that white cardstock showing. So to do that, I just fold up those little ends again and color it in with that crumb cake. So that was the light crumb cake. And then when he jumps out, you won't notice all that white. So there's not a problem here with that stopper showing on the left because we're now going to add her to our card and you can see here that that's going to be tucked in. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold these in again and place some adhesive on my mama kangaroo. And you can use any type of adhesive here. I'm just going to use some stamp and seal and I want to make sure that there's adhesive everywhere except for where I want to do the in and out pulling. Okay. So add a little bit on the tail as well. So up here at the top, I'm gonna to add a little dimensional and that's just gonna give a little more dimension to her head. So I'm gonna keep those folded and I'm going to add this to my card. So the only thing I want to make sure is that the hole that I made is being covered. So like that. And then this little guy is going to open up again in the back here. Oh, see, and I forgot to that I was adding adhesive there. So I need to make sure that I cover up that adhesive. So just take a piece of scratch paper, if you have adhesive that got on there, and cover that up. Okay? Just like that. So we want to make sure that this can move freely. Okay, so we got a cute little bouncing Joey in the pouch. So we're now going to create our guide and this is where we're gonna put our pull tab. So what I've done for my pull tab is I have a half inch of pool party cardstock and the length is three and a quarter inches in length. And I'm gonna use this fun banner punch to create a a cute top for this. So I'm going to use the um, scalloped one. So when I add that strip to my punch, I'm going to turn it around and just make sure that the paper is evenly positioned so I get a nice clean stamp or punch and the it's symmetrical on both sides. So to create the pull tab, I also am going to add a little hole here in the center and I'm going to use just a hole punch that I have. And then I will string some string on there and that will be a nice pull tab for my card. So to create the guide so that your pull tab moves up and down and not at any angles, I'm going to use a foam strip and place it on each side of my pull tab. So you can see here and I'm stopping at the hole. So I don't want to go into that hole at all. So I've got one guide and then make sure that's up nice and close and then you just make another guide. Now it doesn't need to be like super close to each other. So like you do want there to be just the smallest amount of space so that this moves freely back and forth. And you can see here that that really does a nice job. So when this 
So now we're going to attach the baby kangaroo to our pull tab. And so you want to have everything to be down at its lowest position. So I've got my kangaroo all the way down as far as it will go. And then my pull tab, I want to be all the way down as well. So if I want to have like a half inch showing, I could do that. But I'm thinking maybe about a quarter of an inch or so. My next step is to attach my joey to my pull strip. And I'm going to do this with a little bit of my foam adhesive strip. And so I'm going to just look for something that's about the same width as my pull tab. And I'd only want to add a little bit so that this doesn't stop it from um, going up very high. So you can see there I've added. I could probably add a little second one here if I wanted. You could also use just a regular dimensional, but I like using the foam strip because it's the same amount of thickness as these other foam strips here. So you're just going to bring that joey all the way down and then add your strip to the guide and then attach it to the bottom here. And that's gonna give you a little pull for your joey. Now, if by chance it gets, it starts to like bet flip up and down, that's okay because when you put it to your card, all this is going to be um, flat on your card. And so you won't get that weird flipping happening because it will be straight on your card. Okay, so now we're ready to add our elements to our card. So I've got a base of pool party here. And this is just your regular card base size. And I've got a piece of basic white cardstock, and I've embossed it with the Settles embossing folder. And this embossing folder, it will be retiring soon. So if you don't have it and you want it, make sure to grab it. And if you have something else, you're welcome to use just a nice embossing folder to give it some, some texture to that background. Next, I'm adding some petal pink cardstock. This piece is three and a half inches by four and three fourths inches. And I have embossed it with the Stitched with Whimsy dies. And it was just this second to largest size here. Fits nicely inside that size of cardstock. And so this just goes in the center. Gives a nice border around that petal pink. And now we're ready to add this piece. And I do need to add a little more depth to the outside edge. And so to do that, I'm just gonna run some more of these foam strips along the bottom and edge to make sure that I have enough support all the way around. And you wanna make sure that you also remove the paper on your guides. And then make sure that that guide is in there nicely. And then this gets centered inside that stitched whimsy outline just like that and now you can see that that piece will move easily up and down okay so let's finish adding the rest of our elements we're just going to do the bottom with these cute little flower bushes and i'm going to add those with the dimensionals and you can use large dimensionals or minis and then just kind of place those around the bottom. And then we're going to finish with a greeting. And I have already cut out one of the rectangles. And again, this is the same as the envelope die. And I'm just gonna stamp popping by to say hi inside that little rectangle with some memento black ink. Just hover it until it's in the center and then stamp. And then I'm gonna add that with some dimensionals as well, just to this open space right above the tail. And then the last thing I'm going to add is some white baker's twine. And I've just cut a piece that's 10 inches. I'm gonna bring that all the way up and slide in this little piece and then tie a bow. So just find the center, tie a knot, and a little bow. And then you can tuck that back down. 
and then add some cute opal rounds around the kangaroos just to give it a little more bling. And that cute interactive card is now all done. Thanks so much for watching me create this fun card today. If you're interested in getting written instructions or seeing close-up images of this card, you can visit my blog at creativechelsea.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.